Te rangi, tūia ki te whenua, tūia ki ona, ona um, mākau, ona tangata, ko te mea nui, ko te aroha, te hei mauri ora. Ja, Rastafaros Lassiai. Um, I'd just like to say thank you for being here today, and I'd like to um, he mihi e mihi ki te last, um, to the last three speakers, Tini, and um, Nahiwi, and... Dabit. Sorry, Dabit. Mm. Kia ora. Okay, my part of the session today is about 12 tribes of Israel in New Zealand and internationally, and how the music ties into that. Um, and of course, um, um, and, um, and also how um, Bob was a big instigator in terms of um, reggae music as message music, um, and also in reggae music, it's a rhythm. Um, and so Bob was, um, he was from the tribe of Joseph, he was a functioning member of 12 tribes of Israel, along with Sis Judy Mowat, who was um, from the tribe of Asha. And I had the um, privilege and honour of meeting Bob when he came out to New Zealand, and also to, um, with, uh, to meet Rita Marley and Judy Mowat, and also... Um, Sister Hines, and um, and we actually we hosted them um, in our in our house in Um Bob contributed. He worked very hard for Twelve Tribes of Israel in Jamaica, um, and right up till he passed away, he was still contributing to the organ. Now, it's an international organisation, and it was started here in 1983, um, and set up uh, 11 members, we're the foundation members in New Zealand, Tini and I are um, two members of those um, 11 people, and um, we, we um, and this was based on the Bible, of reading it one chapter a day, and it was a scope of reference Bible, and we read one chapter a day, and then we came back again and read the first book of each, uh, sorry, the first chapter of each book, and then we read the whole book of Revelations, then we sealed our, sealed our Bible, which was three and a half years, it takes. Um, no one that I know of, if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know of any other faith that reads the Bible like that. I'm not saying we're the only ones, but I have not heard of anyone that read, um, any faith that reads the Bible like that. So at least we can say we, um, and we can say that we read every word in that Bible. Um, some of us are reading for five or six times going through that time. We try to apply those principles to our life and also within our um, families, um, whānau nui. And we're not perfect people and we're not better than anyone else. That's just the way that um, we um, choose and that's our faith. Okay. Um, Twelve Tribes of Israel International, we celebrate three celebrations a year, and it's mostly around the music um, that helps us. We have a celebration we have on the, the first one is on the 25th of May, which is the OAU celebration. We do that internationally, and that is the Organisation of African Unity. And then on the 23rd of July, we celebrate, that's our Christmas Day, which is Haile Selassie's birthday. And then on the 2nd of November, he was crowned King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah on the 2nd of November in 1930. And 72 nations bowed down before him, acknowledging that, including down the south, which was in... Um, in Australia, Melbourne. I, said, I think this was the closest it got to New Zealand, was he went to Melbourne. Um, if we can just change. Um, I'm going into the music now. First one, yeah, the first one, nothing. Okay. This is where we start training our um, tamariki in the music. Um, and prior to that, before um, that, actually, we think I think, I think we sent about 22 people to a music school run by Toda Iruera. Um, and um, I, we did that for about three years. And also, 
we um, sent them to, what was his name? He was a, um, what do you call it? Saxophone teacher, wasn't he? We sent um, a few people who wanted to so, because we wanted a horn section as well as a rhythm section and as well we had um, singing classes as well. Most of the songs that were written in 12, um, 12 Tribe of Israel, most of us artists, we wrote our own songs. Yeah. And, um, and it was message music and, um, and we also put out an album, 12 Tribes of Israel album, I think there was about uh, there's 13 artists on there and they wrote all their own songs. Um, and this is where, so these, these um, if you can see, um, it's Tumen up here in the front. He is now a, um, from the tribe of Simeon, he is now a uh, fully fledged artist at the moment. We have, um, and this was the first, the Dreadline Band Harmonies. Um, the first band was a Dreadline um, band um, that we had in, um, um, we, our first HQ was in Pollen Street and of course we used to meeting out and have our dancers there, that was great. So that, um, and as you can see Jules Isa, she is a well-renowned um, established um, singer and songwriter herself, um, Jules. Oh that's hello, that we used to have, um, there's our training um, sessions before we would put a, put a dance on. I think this was one of, I think this was in the month of Dan, which is, I can see all the blues here, so that's um, in October. Um, and um, so music played a big part, and this was an, at another celebration. There's a, um, that's when we became the 12th tribe of Israel band. Yeah, so music was rare constantly um, throughout our, and every song that we, we played and sang um, was all originals um, and, and also we taught um, artists and they had to learn, or musicians particularly, they learned how to write music because you know you can get away with feel for so long but in the end you can, um, that doesn't last very long, you know if you want to expand so as much, um, so they learned to write the music, we learned to arrange music, all the um, because they're very expensive um, arrangers and about the only thing we really um, had to part for really was the engineers to put the music down <coughs> and things like that. But for the dancers and that, like as you see here, we mainly had our own, you know, trained engineers to um, do the sound system and that, uh, to do the sound. I guess another, <laughs> this is one of the, you know, one of our, he was in Israel since he was eight, and then um, that's um, Shay. Um, and also, there's a couple of these brother, um, there's Dar, and there's about three of them at the back who are now making <coughs> artists themselves and making. Um, and all it's all came from, you know, Roots Reggae and taught them. Um, yeah. That's um, Tony Fanotti. If he, he was the uh, songwriter for, um, he was in Herbs, the Herb band um, first, and then he um, actually he played a very, very big part um, in the music and tour tribe of Israel in the early days. Um, Tony Fanojan, who's now living in, he's over in Australia. And this was the full picture of the, the horn section, the harmonies, and the, um, and the um, grand place of tour tribe of Israel band. And, I'm not going there, <laughs> and that's um, Asterix. I'm just why I'm showing you this is really just to show you that how much the music um, was, um, you know, um, you know, it was it was also a um, you know part of our, our <coughs> economic base within Israel as well, um, and also and. Because New Zealand at that time cause, um, was mostly, because that was in the 80s, we all, <coughs> the foundation of a 12 tribe of Israel in New Zealand and internationally, I understand, from all the houses that I, I've been to, that we all came from movement backgrounds, <coughs> alone for, um, what do you call it, um, radical backgrounds. Yeah, we all came. Actually, the 12 tribe of Israel was established after the Springboks tour. Well, most of us came out there and we were, at that time, we were 
also Bastion Point, Taka uh, Parafa, um, also, and after the, and that came, before that was uh, 1975, the first hikoi with Finnakui for the um, Māori Lama. <coughs> so, and then I kind of got tired of, you know, living in the courts, <laughs> getting David on longer, I'm sure he was tired of it too, helping to get all our bros and, you know, sisters out of the, you know, out of the court, and then we just one day said, you know, we have to give a better life for our children, because as Shay says, he was a hikoi kid, along with all, you know, um, brought, brought up on the hikois, and along with all, all, a lot of other children, like Hone um, Harawira's children as well, and um, and we just had to, you know, we were parents, and, uh, you know, we're um, and having more children, we had to make a decision but carry it on because there's no way we can get around, get away from it. So it's like what goes around comes around and comes around again. And I think this is the kind of era what's happening now, is that everything now is, is coming to, not to a head, but it's coming around to its full circle for, for a, a lot of us. Um, 